looks like this is gonna be our final Mushoku Tensei cut content for Mr. Any News. Let's finish hard. Let's go. Listen. If you haven't had the chance to watch last episode's cut content yet, then I highly recommend I've you seen do it. before watching this video. I've seen There's it. There's some extremely important context explaining Roxy's actions and Rudy's grief. A lot of people are saying that Annie News cut off a lot of content regarding Roxy's action in the last video. People are like, yo, he's making cut content for cut content now. Like, what's going on? Details I'm thoroughly shocked the anime didn't include, and I would honestly go so far as to say are essential. The okay. finale was a lot more faithful when it came to adapting the rest, but without that missing context, it makes everything just seem flat. Is this the missing context that people are commenting on the last video? So, whether you watch or not is up to you, but I would say last episode was just as important as this one. Okay. Now, as for what you missed here, for the most part, it was just a lot of nuance. Slight changes that make some scenes a little bit different. I'm talking things like Sylphie shutting down Norn and Alina Lise being the best wingwoman. So, as I go through what- Alina Lise being the best wingwoman is the most- I don't know, it's just funny because it's like it's Sylphie's grandma and the grandma's like, Yo, Rudy, I know you married to my granddaughter, but like still cheat on her. Yes, do it. Well, it's not that simple, but it kind of sounds like that, right? What the anime left out from season 2 one last time. I hope, as always, you enjoy learning more about- Holy shit, you guys are stupid. This, this must be your first time on Twitch, huh? This must be your first time on Twitch. Just, just scroll a little bit below. Just scroll a little low and you'll see a number saying it's been five minutes since we started streaming. You, you must be completely new to the platform. Like, everything you need is right here. You have an exact timer of how long the stream has opened for. It's been five minutes. Anyways, let's, let's not dunk on the new kids. Back to Annie News Cut Content Focus. Focus. About it. It's been my absolute pleasure to make these types of videos for you. But now, first. I do need to do one last reminder job. to check out the machine. Yeah, yeah, Spider yeah. I would probably still get the air shirt of everything. Even if the Goddess of War. E even if the Goddess of War, I don't know. It, it, you might think it's cringe. And I think that the, I don't know. Anime, like, merch is cringe for the most part. I don't want just, like, Ahigao face or, like, fucking hentai faces here and there. Or, like, anime girls. I, I like designs that's minimalistic. But, like, you know, just a, just a little snippet of their eyes and, you know, something. Or even the swords, right? It, it, I, I, I do like the Aerith shirt. I would get the Aerith shirt. Anyways, get back to the American main content. Covering chapters 13 to 16 from volume 12 of the light novel. Let's switch views. Whereas the anime starts right with Rudy's arrival, the journey getting here had actually taken him 10 days. It was ample time for Rudy to consider the promise he'd just committed to, as well as contemplate the experience he was now oh returning from. Part of this included informing Lilia about his decision, which to her wasn't surprising at all. She readily accepted it without any judgment whatsoever. This was be Well, it's like, what is she gonna say? She's a second wife of Paul, so it's like, there's no way she's gonna be like, nah, that's unfaithful, you shouldn't do that, young master. Because monogamous marriage only existed in Millis, so convincing her wasn't going to be a problem. We ain't Millis, no. baby. What was was trying to explain things to Norn. Of course, Sylphie was the most important, but if anyone was gonna put up a fuss right from the get-go, Rudy knew Norn would react the worst. I ain't gonna lie. I thought Norn popping off was one of the best moments of the finale. Like, yes, I was a Norn hater in the beginning when she's being a kid, which is completely realistic. There's nothing wrong with being an annoying kid that has no idea what's actually going on and lashing out. I totally get that. We talked about this in those reactions. And while I was shitting on her back then, this type of like... You know, uh, tantrum is different because like Rudy totally deserves it. For once, I'm like, you know what, Norn? Spit your shit. You're absolutely correct. It was one of the problems he knew he couldn't run away from. Despite knowing how angry she'd get, because of his renewed was conviction content. to continue forward, facing Norn was something he simply had to do. It was all part of living with no regrets again. It was once that word had popped into his mind that that's when Rudy would contemplate the man god's words again. A foreboding message he believed hadn't come to fruition yet, since what he felt now wasn't regret, but instead sadness. Anxiety then bubbled for the remaining days he was traveling, so by the time he had made it back to the city, he was just about ready to burst from the anticipation of it all. It's the reason he started to sprint and leave everyone behind. Now, the anime had added quite a bit of drama to this, because for one, Rudy didn't fall flat on his face, and for another, Aisha was right there as soon as he entered. There was 
what are they yeah the anime made it seem like everyone died it's like wait what happened to our family oh my god the man god was right but it's like psych isn't that build up making you think perhaps something did happen yeah i thought someone else there showed up there was a moment where rudy was about to fall though but because selena lise is a real one through and through she was right there next to him to catch him she had run alongside rudy all the way to the house then provided much needed composure to someone who was clearly panicking it's not too important since it doesn't really change anything, but it does show a part of Alina Lise I've actually grown quite fond of. As for Rudy's misplaced regrets, it turns out they were just referring to the deaths of Paul and his old parents. The okay. rest of his anxiety was thankfully unnecessary. So it's confirmed now that you're gonna have regrets was what the man got said. Like the, the regrets I understand relates to Paul dying, and then of course, you know, the remembrance of family back on earth of like now i can move forward because you know paul dying reminded me that you know parents are important and i need to fix myself yeah but like is this the regret that man god was specifically saying is that is that just been confirmed now man god saying you're gonna have regrets if you go like that's what this was the story has completely confirmed now that the regrets is specifically about the parents stuff coming up and then resolving it is this true or is there something else more to this? For Rudy's misplaced regrets, it turns out they were just referring to the deaths of Paul and his old parents. Okay. The rest of his anxiety was thankfully unnecessary. Now, it was once home that Rudy would get the chance to talk to Sylphie first, since in the time it took for Aisha to get Norn from school, the two were able to catch up privately. It was a conversation which basically gave us a small update on what happened here. There wasn't anything particularly noteworthy, but there was this one incident at school that Nanahoshi took care of. A rather peculiar development since she usually kept to herself. Aside mm -hmm. from that, Aisha's hobby of gardening was flourishing, Norn somehow became something like an idol and now has her own what? Fan club. Zanapa How does Norn become an idol? Because she is the brother of Rudy's grey rat, Quagmire, this great being. Is that it? She's, she's just the most popular kid now? Cliff, Linnea, and Persena all made their occasional okay. checkups. Ariel was upset that Rudy didn't even tell her he Well, like, what her. could have Norn done by herself to create a fan club? If it's by association of her great brother, then it makes sense. What the fuck has Norn done to prove her worth? She's writing a book about Rouge right now. I understand that. That's perfectly fine. I thought she's going to go a different direction. She picked up swordsmanship, too, last episode. But, like... I don't think she has anything significant that would warrant a fan club unless other kids just think that she's hot and they're just horny. Oh, okay. It's just looks. It's, it's that simple. All right. Was leaving, then Bodyguardy was still missing and unaccounted for. Bodyguardy Rouge. It was fairly Let's go. standard stuff for the four months he'd been away from everyone. Sylphie would then ask what happened to Rudy, but after seeing everyone's faces and the absence of Paul, it didn't take long for her to come to her own conclusions. Uh oh. Reading Zenith only reaffirmed her assumption, and it made clear the ensuing conversation wasn't going to be as happy as she uh -oh. thought it was. What she initially perceived as Zenith simply disapproving of their marriage was instead shown to be something worse. Now, Norn and Aisha's return was first prefaced by a round of tea, which, as you'd expect, was heavily scrutinized by Lilia. Since this was what she trained Aisha to do, it was only natural she was judging to see whether her daughter was capable or not. <laughs> this included gathering the luggage, hanging people's coats, and drying their shoes. They take this shit so seriously. But it's their job, it's their entire life and profession. They dedicate their lives to be a maid. I, I get it, it's just... I don't know, I never really thought of, like, Lilia just, like... I don't know, being that strict, like, are you doing this shit right? How much tea leaves did you put in this? All of which was done impeccably and to Lilia's satisfaction. It was decent work that only warranted a light reminder of why it is Aisha does all this. this you may be related to Lord Rudy's by blood, but it was he who saved your life. Keep that in mind as you continue to carry out your duties as his mate. All right, all right. This was a comment Rudy found to be a little bit weird, since considering both hadn't seen each other in years, you'd think they'd act a little more warm to each other. Nah, we're we gonna be very professional. There is no fucking around, you know, in the world of maids. Instead, Lilia was more in teacher mode, so perhaps this was just her showing restraint. They were about to have quite the serious conversation after all. 
The conversation itself wasn't particularly different, but both Rudy and Norn were a lot more blunt with what they said to each other. Rudy just straight up stated that Paul had died, and Norn rebuttaled by confirming he Rudy dead. didn't save either of their parents. Of course, she was angry and upset, but she wasn't so immature as to not hear what Rudy had to say first. So, after a summary of the tragedy and a waterfall of tears, Norn would quickly accept that this was just the outcome, then immediately look forward in a way that Rudy could only be envious of. So, Light Novel made it look like Norn was very level-headed, calm, and mature, but the anime made her pop off for discontent? Is, is that it? Whereas he confined himself and required saving, not only did Norn face Paul's death head-on, but she did so instantly and all by herself. Wow. She didn't blame Rudy or the world or herself, but instead accepted that this was how things were and continued forward. Why is Norn best character now? What, the, what happened? Why? <laughs> the light novel Norn is built different. The anime made her pop off, which I'm very happy. It was peak content. I loved her popping up just shitting on Rudy, bro. But like, the light novel makes her seem such a stoic and mature person. That's not to say she wasn't feeling grief, but she certainly wasn't feeling that same level of regret like how Rudy did. <laughs> no, Norn understood that nothing could be done about it, and in the process displayed yet another incredible feat of emotional maturity. To Rudy, she was truly strong in her own way. She is, it sounds like it. This when she alone understood the feelings Aisha was holding back, since what Rudy mistook for Aisha trying to be distant from Lilia, Norn recognized as Aisha showing restraint. Once right, and there was a point where it's like, you don't have to, you know, be all professional. You can go hug Lilia and just like cry it out. There was that moment, right? Glance was all it took for Norn to understand Aisha's true emotions. How is she just understanding? Now, like, like what happened? What happened? Something changed. Something significantly changed. Norn went from crybaby annoying little bitch to like the most mature, wise grand sage ever. Saw Norn take Paul's long sword after this, but what we didn't see was how Aisha took his other one. This oh? ultimately left she Rudy did? with nothing since, while he was supposed to get Paul's armor, Zenith subconsciously yeah, took that did. for herself. She did. It was an outcome Rudy was surprisingly okay with since, to him, Paul had given him so much already. Rudy would then go on to explain Zenith's condition, which was just as much a mystery now as it Honestly, was. I think it's better that Aisha and uh, Norn took the swords, as well as Zenith taking their griefs, because I think about it, where would Rudy like place this, bro? Like, in the shrine with Roxy's panties, it just feels kind of weird to, like, kind of disrespectful to, like, you know, it's like a memento of a late father and put a sword in the shrine, and then suddenly you also have right beside it as Roxy's fresh panties in the sacred relic. It was before. He wasn't certain nothing could be done about it, but with the way everyone else spoke, they all made it seem like chances of recovery were slim. Like, if healing magic wasn't good enough and the current medical technology too primitive to examine her brain, any sort of recovery just seemed unrealistic right now. Didn't he say that it's impossible last episode to cut content? It's like, it's literally impossible. The anime is making it seem like it's a bit uh, uh, vague. Like, they, they talked about, she just lost her memories and, you know, her brain function just seemed to be gone for now. But maybe it's possible, maybe it's not, who knows. But any news last episode was like, nah, this shit's like impossible. Even with like divine healing, it's impossible. Perhaps inflicting the same level of shock would have her memory snap back, but that wasn't something Rudy was willing to experiment. Besides, Rudy wasn't even sure she'd be happy if she got her memories back anyway. He knew it wasn't right to assume that though, so at the very least they had to try and do something. The minimum of which was to find some proper care and treatment for her. It was after this that- Did mom and dad get- all this messed up thing happened to them just because of Rudy existing here. Because like, let's take a step back. This is an isekai show. Rudy is someone that should not exist. Orsted said, Paul should have not had a son. Yet here he is. And now he is changing the outcomes of this world. Mainly around those people close to him. And if Rudy wasn't here, Paul and Zenith would be a happy married couple still. That's true. I mean, the story is centered on Rudy, but I'm just trying to think of, like, in a meta way of, like, how, you know, you, introducing a foreign element into a timeline that should have already had it an outcome is now being altered into this, you know, state where Paul is dead and mom's a vegetable, you know? So. 
that everyone would say their goodbyes and, through that, give a little insight as to what some were gonna do next. Geese and Tallhand were planning to return to adventuring, while Viera and Shiera were gonna go back to Asura. Bye bye. Apparently, there were still people Bald. in the search and rescue squad they were indebted to, so that's who they were gonna go help out next. This reminded Rudy that Zenith's family had a. Is grandma kind of hot? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This is the mean grandma from Zenith's side that was like uh, shitting on the kids, right? I wonder what grandma would think about Zenith. Like, if Zenith is being a vegetable, would grandma be so like unreasonable? She would show up and be like, this is your own fault. Oh, you're a vegetable. You're weak, pathetic, can't even speak or talk now. You can't even think. Are you there? Hello? Well, I bet she would insult Zenith in the state. I, I bet that's the kind of mentality grandma would have. I've actually been financing Paul's activities, so if anything, he at least needed to send them a letter. Sure, Zenith wasn't in the best condition, but they did deserve to know that she'd been found. Fast forward now to when only five were left, and aside from the egregious act of removing Dillo as their new household pet, the true carnage, so to say, would- <laughs> Dillo as their household pet? What? Oh, the armadillo, was that important in the, in the light novel? Removing Dillo as their new household pet, okay. the true carnage, so to say, was in Rudy's plea to Sylphie. Yeah, Roxy, As he recounted the extent of his betrayal, the longer it went on, the worse it got. Especially when he mentioned how he may have gotten Roxy pregnant. <gasps> this brought up the whole notion Pregnante. of how he had to take responsibility, but was in actuality nothing but a lie. For those of you currently confused, mm. last episode I mentioned how Alina Lise told Rudy that Roxy was pregnant. Was it confirmed? He said that to make she said that to make Rudy like um more incentivized to be with Roxy, right? This was what spurred Rudy's rapid change of heart, and it made it easier to accept the idea of having two wives. Goddamn, Grandma. Again, it's not Rudy's fault, guys. Rudy is a victim here, just like the Eris incident in season one, where she overpowered him and, you know, manipulated him and groomed him. It's funny how Rudy keeps putting into these positions where he kind of gets bailed out, because, like, right now, no one can, like... Well, everyone's gonna shit on him, but like the defense here is, well, no, we didn't want to do it, but Roxy jumped on Rudy and Irina Rize lied. And Rudy is actually being such a good parent by not being a deadbeat and stepping up to take care of not only one, but two wives. What a great character, man, right? This is a defense now that Rudy just gets bailed out on. Well. We don't find this out until a little bit after this fight, but that whole thing was just a story Alina Lise made up. She never had that type of conversation with Roxy, Damn, Grandma. and Roxy never told her anything indicating that she Damn, was Grandma! As it turns out, Alina Lise just couldn't stand seeing Roxy be so sad, so she baited Rudy into thinking that he had to take care of her. She must love Roxy more than her own fucking granddaughter, Sophie. It was a simple trap that worked exactly as yeah. she intended it to. A little white lie that simply sped up what was likely inevitable. Oh, a little white so, lie! Roxy isn't pregnant, and she never was, but the notion she was was a major part in things turning out this way. So are we just gonna not tell Rudy that she's not pregnant? Is he still under the assumption she's pregnant? I don't know how this is gonna turn out. But anyway, it was Norm's outburst after that became quite the point of contention. This is a great we part. We saw just how obnoxious she was being, and to Rudy, it was starting to become unacceptable. I mean... Obnoxious, I mean, I enjoyed it. I like, I thoroughly enjoyed, you know, Norn popping off and shitting on everybody. So much so that he almost got to the point of hitting her. Oh! He wasn't in the right. Imagine he punched her in the finale, bro. To do so, but if it meant putting a stop to this heinous Roxy slander, Rudy yeah. was just about ready to do it. Heinous Roxy slander. Definitely an unbiased video for Mr. Annie News. And in uses biases, you know, it, it, it's creeping up in the verbiage that he is using. This heinous Roxy slander. I do not, I mean, <clears throat> you know, because like I feel like when he's making these videos, he's trying to, you know, portray himself as a storyteller without any biases or favoritism. But here it's just like, blasphemy! How dare you say this shit to Roxy? Do so. 
even if it meant making his sister hate him. If it prevented Roxy from leaving, then that was a sacrifice he was willing to make in that moment. Okay. Luckily, it didn't come to that, but that was the level of panic Rudy was dealing with when confronted with Roxy leaving like that. He was so desperate to make things right that he would do literally anything. That's when Sylphie would step up and set her straight instead, and the- Yeah, and at the end of the day, like, the resolution only happened because Sylphie was the bigger woman. She was like, you know what? This is all messed up. But I will take this collective L upon myself and just be like, everything is fine. It's fine. She can join the family. It is what it is. The way she did was a lot more firm than the soft, kind words we saw her say in the anime. Whereas here she was being all nice and considerate. In the novel, Sylphie straight up told Norn to stop. <laughs> she had even scolded Norn for being too harsh. It was a more stern version of Sylphie I would have loved to see in the anime. Oh, Norn got away with it. In the light novel, she just... Don't you fucking dare, Norn. You sit the fuck down. This brings us now to why Sylphie was so understanding of everything, and in addition to all we saw her say already, there was an interesting caveat she mentioned for the scenario when Rudy did sleep with someone else. Mm -hmm. Sylphie knew that when he and he would cheat did, anyways, he would also be loyal enough to want to bring her into the family. Not once did Sylphie think she'd have Rudy to herself forever. Yeah, what does that mean? It just kind of shows you what kind of character Rudy is, right? It's just like, the wife already knew that he's going to cheat on me. Yeah, I'll still take it. I, yeah, it is what it is. It, it is all... Again, our culture and society is so prefaced on monogamy. And if you kind of like break those vows, it's a, it's a huge stigma, right? That's why a lot of people obviously have these uh, harsh uh, opinions about Rudy. But in this world, it's like, if you're not a follower of Millis, it's like having multiple lives. Fuck it, just ball out. Dad did it. Who cares? The reason she was so surprised when the topic came up then was because she never expected it to happen during this trip here. Yeah, well, especially she when you're pregnant. She always figured it would be Linnea, Persona, or Nanahoshi, but come Good instincts! Linnea, Persona could have been. Nanahoshi, I don't think quite. I don't think Nanahoshi feels that way. But like, yeah, there were moments when like, you know, Sophie was getting ignored. When Nanahoshi and Rudy were like talking and shit, right? During the teleportation, you know, discussions and she felt a little jealous. Completely forgot it could happen while away saving his parents. She was then so caught up in the tragedy that had befallen Rudy that it didn't even occur to her that he could have hooked up with someone. <laughs> That's the reason why she was so visibly surprised when Rudy revealed it to her. It wasn't because he had brought another wife home, but rather because of the wild circumstances under which it happened. Only after thinking about it a little bit longer did Sylphie realize, yeah, this makes sense for Rudy. Okay. So that's when the two would accept each other as equals and both agree to support Rudy together. Wait till they have to have this conversation again next season when Eris shows up. <laughs> wonder how that's gonna happen. Like, because like if you're gonna bring up the topic of marriage, like, like how, what kind of situation would create a marriage of Eris entering as a third wife, right? I mean, Eris left on bad terms, but it was one-sided. I don't think Eris was mad or upset. She was mad at herself for being weak against after the fight with the Orsted and decided to seek out greater strength and left to become more independent. Doesn't mean that she doesn't love Rudy. Rudy took it the wrong way. Now when she comes back, will she still be like, Hey, remember the time we fucked that one time in season one? I'm still in love with you. Therefore, can I join the family? It can't be just that simple. There's going to be some sort of necessity that arises that I just can't figure out, whether it be political or just kind of like, I don't know, like, how could she just join into the family? Now, it's a bit later, we find out Sylphie. Oh, that's another interesting opinion, right? How will Eris react when she'll see Rudy's family, right? So, like, feeling of jealousy, feeling of like, damn, I missed out, like, damn, I walked away from all this. Like, he's got two wives now. Right, he's got a he's got a kid on the way, unless the kid's already out. You know, he got a big ass family, and what do I have? Wonder how Eris would feel about that. Would she feel jealous and secure? Would she feel like proud of Rudy? I I don't know. I don't know. He went into this conversation. May, may, maybe that jealousy itself is how she's gonna force herself into be the third wife. Like I don't know what kind of situation would arise where Eris just shows up. Maybe she just shows up next season. She just knocks on the mansion. And it's like, oh, it's Eris. What the fuck? Just like how Rouge just showed up, right? Maybe there doesn't need to be this crazy plot of just her getting rediscovered. And then she feels jealous. So she starts to make moves on Rudy. And eventually Rudy cheats on Roxy and Sophie. And then that, that, that's it. I, I don't know. Maybe. 
adaptation expecting the worst, so that was yet another reason for why she was so surprised by it. Maybe, yeah. That's another way, right? Maybe she'll feel like, hold up. Last time I saw you, we fucked and had a good time, and now I left. And I come back, and you have two wives and a kid. How dare you do this to me? Was that, is that the mindset that she would have? There's a lot of different... Because, like, both sides are completely different chapters right now on, on how they left off. If Eris was under the impression that they had something special after they left, and he comes back, and it's like, wow, you have two other wives, that is going to be a bombshell. What she initially thought was Rudy getting ready to leave her was instead something far more manageable. Rudy, of course, wasn't ever gonna do that, but for some reason, Sylphie had a feeling Rudy wasn't coming back to her. Consider it a very strong sense of foreboding. Sylphie, Roxy, and Rudy would then get the chance to talk in private, the majority of which was spent discussing how things would work from now on. They <laughs> yeah. decided we share beds? to get Rudy until she gave birth, and after that, the two would split their time with him equally. Okay, well, what about the bed? Where, where, are, we, where are we all sleeping, right? Do they all sleep in the same bed? <laughs> These, right? Equally split the time. This is actually so funny to think about like their day-to-day -day lives of like, how they're going to share the husband. <laughs> This was an idea that came directly from Sylphie, since to monopolize Rudy wouldn't be fair to Roxy. Okay. There was also no telling when Rudy might come home with a third wife. It's gonna happen! It's, it's, next season, it's 100% gonna happen! Of course, Rudy had zero intention of doing so, but in the off chance he did, Sylphie knew her and Roxy needed to spend as much time as possible with him now. <laughs> it was a notion Rudy fully exclaimed to be impossible, so long as he wasn't depressed and confronted by a woman of Roxy's caliber again. So we gotta, okay, so like, I don't know if this is the only situation where this will happen, but like, so Rudy needs to get depressed, and then he gets confronted by Eris, because I think Eris is on Roxy's caliber. So all, all we need is for this motherfucker to get depressed again for whatever reason, and then Eris shows up and easy, it's, it's over. Damn. Isn't that great, guys? Where it's just like, you're an isekai character, and every time you feel sad, unlimited amount of girls comes around and tries to, you know, have intercourse with you, and then you feel better, and now it's none of it's your fault, and they're all just trying to save you. Rudy gets away with all this bullshit, bro. Straight up. Rudy gets away with so much bullshit. And, like, I understand the whole story is about redemption and him changing, but, like, you can tell why a lot of people get upset, right? Because every time he does something quote-unquote shitty, he gets bailed out by these different things that were out of his control. For example, people are mad that he cheated on Sylphie with Roxy and brought a second wife. But then the protection is, well, shit, Elena Rize said that Roxy, you know, was already pregnant and, like, Rudy had to do it. And he was super depressed and, Dad, Dad, what do you want, right? So there's a lot of these different things that happens where it's like, you can't completely blame Rudy, but I totally understand why a lot of people will be upset at this. As long as that specific situation never happened again, Rudy was convinced he wouldn't cheat ever. <laughs> well, for a second time. <laughs> they got no fucking clue. Fast forward. The, the best part is these two don't even know that- Oh, no, 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 Roxy is the original, but- And Sophie was there. Yeah, no, 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 Eris was the third. Because, like, think about her, right? Uh, who showed up to our house first? I, I think we met, uh, did we meet Sylphie before Roxy or Roxy before Sylphie? Uh, the timeline is a bit obscure to me right now. I feel like it was Roxy first, right? Then Sylphie, okay, okay, and then Eris. So I was like, in or I'm like, did the order of how we met these girls, you know, determine the wife slot? Not, not really, because we met Roxy first and then Sylphie, so that's kind of swap. But then Eris still number three, so I feel like, come on now. It was seen where Dillo tried to hop in bed with Rudy and Sylphie. What? Dillo? Ever. Well, for a second time. Fast forward to a scene where Dillo tried to hop in bed with Rudy and Sylphie, then after that would be the days following this. Who was Dillo trying to fucking... <laughs> Who was Dillo trying to do? D Dillo hopped in a... Yo, why is there so many Dillo memes that are cut out from the anime? What, what is up with this armadillo, man? Where Dillo tried to hop in bed with Rudy and Sylphie, then after that would be the days following this. <laughs> Their relationship was going stronger than ever, and Rudy had no problem loving both her and Roxy equally. He figured as long as he kept doing what he was doing, then maybe he could get by even with a third wife. <laughs> He's already thinking! He's It's like his mindset isn't like, oh, I've, I've messed up. I'm going to make sure this is it. 
two wives only. This is it. I'm going to devote my life to them, nothing else. But he's already thinking like, shit. You know what? Things are going all right. At this rate, I think I can squeeze in another one. <laughs> I think I might fucking do it, bro. Spent her days as a professor at the university, and it wasn't long before she'd been introduced to everyone. One month later was Sylphie's delivery, and aside from this being the third that Lucy Rudy has been a part of, there was a scene right after where Rudy would ask Roxy to do the same for him. He had essentially just witnessed the birth of his first child, then immediately went to Roxy and told her she was next. <laughs> Some may consider <laughs> Yeah, I get why people hate this show. I get why people hate Rudy. Listen, I think that the storytelling in this show is amazing. But like, let's not get it twisted. Rudy is an absolute piece of shit that doesn't, that doesn't deserve any of this. I truly believe that. I don't think Rudy deserves any of this shit, bro. What, are you gonna tell me that he's such a fucking inspiring character because he had trauma and now he's experiencing loss here and now he relates back to his old life and is able to move forward? I can appreciate that storytelling, but like, goddamn, bro, this motherfucker, he does not deserve any of these girls. This hopeless behavior, but to Rudy, he was genuinely looking forward to it. It was all part of his resolve to living life to the fullest. Now, the part with Paul's grave yep. just reaffirmed what it was he was living for, and it captured that message pretty much perfectly. Much to the point that there's nothing for me to really add here. It was the anime simply reminding us what this story is all about. The Redemption? portrayal of Rudy's continued journey forward. Yeah. So, that's that for Mushoku Tensei Season 2. For those of you that only- Aww, flashback ghosts of the past where Zenith still had her brain. Watch my channel for this anime. I guess I'll see you back here when season three comes out. Guys, not, then you can always check out my videos on Tensora too. That's right, guys. Please, this is the final ending of Mushoku Tensei. This is an end of an era, right? I mean, we still have Tensora cut content going on, but like, please go like his video, sub to his channel if you haven't. That's actually so amazing, bro. 2.7k. Look at this breakdown, bro. He got 23k views. Two dislikes out of all of this. That is an amazing ratio. It just goes to truly show like. How good this guy is uh, just kind of explaining some of the stuff that's obviously cut out from the content that we're watching and does so in a really great way. <coughs> Tower of God wasn't really like that, but separate exceptions. Now, thank you for watching along with us from Mushoku Tensei, and I'm sure we're going to get more good content for Tensei and stuff. But guys, go ahead and go give Annie New some love.